4, verses 1 through 17. The title of the message is Tried and True. Tried and True. There was a lady down in South Alabama who went to the Bruton Gazette and said that she wanted to take out an ad or to put in a, an ad uh, in the obituaries. And she said, I just simply want to make it simple. Billy Joe died. And the person who took her form said, Ma'am, we have a limit of seven words. And she said, Okay. So she took it back. She wrote it a little more down. And it said, gave it back to him said, Billy Joe died, 54 Chevrolet for sale. truck. Then Jesus, led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, excuse me, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to a, the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It's also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. says Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the, into the desert. <clears throat> now 
Now, why in the world would the Holy Spirit lead Jesus out into the desert? Why would he lead him out there to be tempted? Did God want Jesus to be tempted and fall and fail? No, that wasn't what it was all about. It was not an attempt to get Jesus to fail. God was sending Jesus to boot camp. That's what it was all about. Moses had gone to boot camp. And others as well. They'd spent their time in the desert. They'd spent their time out alone, away from people. David, those that became great in Israel that God used, he first had to test them and to prove them. And that's why Jesus went out there, was to prove his mettle, to prove his character, not necessarily to God or to himself, but to us, to prove his mettle to us. <clears throat> I can imagine that he probably wanted to spend a little time in prayer and meditation, and he probably tried to. But have you ever tried to spend a little time in prayer and meditation, and every time you start to pray, there's something that comes up and stops you. You start to pray and one of the kids starts screaming. You start to pray and somebody comes in looking for you. You start to pray, something happens, always. <laughs> and that's that's about what was going on here with, with Jesus. He tried to pray. He tried to have a little time alone. Even when Jesus went out later on, out uh, away from the disciples, and, and tried to have a little time alone so that he could pray, what happened? They came after him. He couldn't have any time alone. And here's that same kind of thing. He's out there, a little time alone. No, one temptation after the other. <clears throat> Satan doesn't leave him alone. And then after 40 days, Jesus realizes he's hungry. About that time, his tummy is starting to make all those grumbling noises. Probably had been making them for a little while, but he's really noticing it. And the front part of his stomach is getting stuck to the back part because there's nothing in between. <laughs> well, he's hungry. He's hungry for physical food. And this is Satan's opportune moment. And he pounces. He doesn't. Satan never misses an opportunity. If you leave an opening, he's going to get it. He's going to come and he's going to attack you. Anytime you have an unguarded moment. Satan does that. And that's what he did with Jesus. <clears throat> and so, he pounced. And he sa said, hey, look at there. You see those stones down there? Don't they just, don't they really look like a, a loaf of bread? You know, he says, I'll bet you if you try hard enough, you could even smell them. Have you ever, have you ever really had something like that happen? That you thought that you could smell something that you knew could, you couldn't smell, but just the idea of it was there? Sometimes 
I think uh, the idea was that when I would walk into Clarice's kitchen, I would automatically expect to have some aromas there. And sometimes there weren't any. But I expected them to be there. And I think, you know, you never know. But anyway, he said, why don't you take and turn those stones into bread? Have something to eat. You know, go to McDonald's. You don't have to wait for somebody to prepare you a meal. Go to McDonald's. Little fast food. <clears throat> but Jesus refused the fast food. Yeah, he hungered for the physical food. And Satan took the opportunity and he pounced on it. Jesus wanted to. He wanted to turn those rocks into bread. And you know what the strange thing is? Is that later on, Jesus would feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. He would turn... He would, he would multiply bread, the miracle of the bread and the fishes, and then he would feed 4,000. He would feed 4,000 with seven loaves and a few fish. Another miracle. So indeed, Jesus would feed other people, thousands of them, with the bread. But he wouldn't create a miracle and feed himself. He would not do that. He refused to. But listen, it was about a lot more than just hunger. And it was more than Satan's chicanery. Satan was challenging Jesus to prove that he was the Son of God. He was challenging him to prove that he was the Messiah. He was challenging him to prove that he was the Christ. In fact, he was saying, I dare you. I double dog dare you. Prove that you're the Son of God. Turn that bread, those stones into bread. And throughout Jesus' ministry, throughout his ministry, Satan never stopped. He influenced people to come to Jesus to tempt him this, through the Sadducees and Pharisees especially <clears throat> they came and annoyed Jesus with one question after another trying to get him to prove that he was the son of God do something to prove it give us a miracle show who you are but you've got to do the miracle that we want you to do and when we want you to do it. It's really about man controlling God. That's what they want to do. They wanted to control God. And you know, people today want to control God. We want to control God. They did. That's what it was all about. You know, throughout his ministry, Jesus faced that. You know, there was a song that saying, I did it my way. Well, Jesus did it the Father's way. He wouldn't give in to the temptations of man, and he wouldn't give in to the temptations of Satan. He was truly the Son of God. And then when he 
wouldn't turn the, the stones into bread, Satan came up to him again with something else. He wanted him to take a little leap of faith. Well, if you won't do that, how about taking a leap of faith? He said, listen, throw yourself. He took him up on, to, on top of the temple. And he said, throw yourself off this temple because God's angels will stop you from even stumbling and hurting your foot. Be Superman. <laughs> Fly. You won't hurt yourself. Jump. They'll protect you. Listen, go be a real showman, a real Barnum Bailey. <clears throat> but that's not about faith. It's about putting God to the test. And that's what Jesus said. You shall not test God. And you know, a lot of people think that they're stepping out in faith when in truth they're testing God. You really need, when you do something like that, you need to ask yourself, am I stepping out in faith, trusting God, or am I testing God? Am I testing Him? And sometimes we find that we're doing the latter. We're testing God. We're trying to control the situation. And that's what it's about. Trying to control God. Trying to control all of our situations. <clears throat> Thinking that, that by doing that, we can get done what we want to get done. Um, Gideon in the Old Testament. Gideon did one of those tests. And he said he was called to to go and lead the people of Israel. And uh, he said, well, me, I'm just one of the lowest men from the lowest tribes. I'm not, uh, I'm not qualified to do this. He said, yeah, but we, you need to do it. The angel did. And he said, well, he says, need a little proof. If you take and this little fleece, fleece, it was a, a sheep's rug. <clears throat> if tonight, if the dew settles on the rug and not on the ground around it, I'll know that I should go when I wake up in the morning. So when he woke up in the morning, that's the way it was. He said, well, let's do it one more time. But let's do it the opposite. This time, if it's on the ground and not on the, on the rug, then I'll know that I should go. And so indeed, that's what happened. And uh, <clears throat> sure enough, uh, the dew was on the ground and not on the fleece. So he had no choice. He went. But I thought it was really a little bit of God's poetic justice that... Uh, 
when Gideon went down with his 10,000 men that uh, God said, you've got too many men. You've got to get rid of some. Actually, he had a hundred and some thousand to start with. And he said, you've got too many. And so he cut them back and he ended up with 10,000. And God said, you know, you've still got too many men. He says, well, okay. He says, oh, he says you go down there to the... <clears throat> to the water and those that lap <coughs> the water you keep them and those that don't those that get down on their all fours and, and, and drink you leave them here and he ended up with only 300 men so he only had 300 men to go in battle. He uh, wanted to change the rules a couple of times. God changed the rules on him. So he only ended up with 300 men. But that was all he needed because God gave him the battle, the battle plan. <clears throat> He took and put torches inside of pitchers and he took trumpets <clears throat> in the other hand and they all had them and they carried swords at their sides and they marched into the middle of the camp or snuck into the middle of the camp and at the signal when, the, when Gideon blew the horn, they, uh, they smashed the, uh, the covers so that the lamps, and they held them up, and they blew the horns. <clears throat> and the Midianites thought that they were being attacked, and they jumped up and started killing each other. And they lost. They lost. But it was all about, all about a leap of faith. Faith. We have to trust the Lord and not put demands on the Lord. That's the whole key. Trusting the Lord and not putting demands on the Lord. And then he said, then he took him up on the mountain and he just showed him a vista of everything. And the way it sounds like it, it sounds like that he showed him a vista of all history, of all the great nations of the world, of all history. And there they were before him. He saw them all. <clears throat> he says, they're all yours. You can have authority over them all. if you just bow down and worship me. And he says, Jesus told him, he said, but it says in scripture, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And serve him only.
Now it says more than that in that passage. It comes from the sixth chapter of, of uh, Exodus. And here's what it says in that chapter. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a, in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Then, when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, Fear the Lord your God. Serve him only. And take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. For the Lord your God is among you. He is a jealous God. And his hunger, his anger will burn against you. And he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at Massa. Be sure to keep the commands of the Lord your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. It was something serious when Jesus said it here. He said, listen. God said, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And if you don't, he'll destroy you. He'll destroy you from the face of the land. Kind of serious. So do what is right and good in the Lord's sight so that it may go well with you and you may go in and take over the good land the Lord promised on earth to your ancestors. It's written, worship the Lord and serve him only. <clears throat> That's what we're called to do. You know, everything would be belong to Jesus without having to go to the cross. If he would just have done what Satan wanted. At least that's what Satan said. But that was a lie. That was a lie. A lie from hell. If there had been another way, God would have said so. And Jesus asked for another way, but there was no other way approved by God. So Jesus went to the cross to die for you and for me. And we need to remember that. Jesus was preaching here to the Jews. At first it may sound